Doodle bud. So apparently this was an exceptionally popular pen. So much so the eBay listing that had these sold out exceptionally quick. And a lot of people are like, darn, I missed it. So I actually contacted the seller, said, do you have any more? He posted 30 more and those sold out even quicker than the first batch. However, I believe that the pen has what I would call a very rare design flaw that Pilot did. So this is a 1990s version. I checked here on the nib. I believe it's uh, on the date code there. It's a 1992. So it says A592. So that's May of 92 and A, I forget the name though, but it's one of the plants. I'll put it in the bottom there in the description where it was made. So lovely pen. Absolutely love it. Writes perfectly. Been using it every day. Um, I want to change the ink because this Namiki blue here is just a little bit too boring. I want to put some of this Diamine Majestic blue in here, but I don't want to take the, the pen apart very often because this is the issue, is these threads and the focus on my camera. Try my best here, but you could see we got some pretty sharp and gnarly threads uh, that left over when this notch here is machined out. And what happens is it goes into the plastic body and you know, this is, I barely use this thing just about a week. So you can already see what's going on to those threads. So the problem is not going to go away on its own. Uh, I, I can't, I can't get rid of that with just a little bit of grease to lubricate things that the threads are legit cutting. And this is the mist, this brass piece here that contains the clicker mechanism. Why on earth did they not just continue this brass piece up further, further up the pen body, you know, kind of to there and then have the threads run internal there. So we got the metal here going on to the metal and not have this terrible carnage. I don't know why they didn't uh, why they didn't do that in the first place. That's a rare kind of miss by Pilot as far as I'm concerned. Now, a lot of people bought these and it's driving me a little bit bonkers too. So what I'm gonna do today is see if we can uh, clean up those threads, get them not so harsh. So this doesn't get so harsh over time. Now, eventually I may have to uh, get this pen re-sleeved. Apparently there's someone who makes a brass sleeve like this to go into the pen and it's got threads on there to reinforce this. So I want to see what can I do just here at home uh, before having to take that step. So let's get to it. Step one is going to be just let's get all this other stuff out of the way so we don't get any little you know shavings or dustings here in any other parts that we don't want. And then step two I'm going to put a little bit of tape around here just to protect the body in case when I'm doing this, the piece of sandpaper scratches or whatever. So I'm just gonna put a little tape on here just to protect things. So what I'm gonna use and try out here, I got some 220 grit sandpaper. I got some 400 grit. I got my micro mesh pads. I'm gonna see what works best. What I am gonna do is put the magnification here onto the camera. If you're wondering what I'm using for magnification, I'll put a link down there in the description for you can check out. But you can see that edge there where it's cut out. You can actually just see the burr right on the edge. Very, very crisp. Uh, I don't think we actually need to round this over too much. It's not too bad, but it might be just enough if we get rid of those crispy edges there and those burrs and just round the very start of the thread where it just leads in. If we round those over a bit, that might be enough to do it. So, uh, Let's, I think the sandpaper is, uh, is going to be the ticket on this. I'm not even going to bother with the 220. I think the 400, uh, is going to be sufficient on here. We'll just fold it over, get a real crisp edge. You could get something, uh, in here. I don't know, like a credit card or some thin piece of plastic to help keep the rigidity a little bit. If you're going to use uh, micro mesh pads, Whatever one you're using, let's just say you're using this one, you could use the very corner angle to get in there. Um, but I think they're just a little bit too big. So I'm just going to do here, let's get you the best focus I can. Um, I'm just going to put it into the start of the thread there. Okay. Oh, there we go. And I'm just going to just go back and forth real gently. I don't need to take off much material as you saw there under the magnification. And I just want to get rid of that internal burr. And then what I'll do after I do this is I'll come back to the top of them and uh, I'll just round the very start of the thread. So I'm going to round over that top edge, but let's just clean out these grooves first, get them a little bit smoother, get that burr off, and then I'll come back around 
And I'll probably, I think when I'll attack it, I'll attack it like this. I'll go across this way and focus there. Let's lock the focus. Maybe that will do it. There we go. So I'll probably come across the top here and just kind of round them back a little bit so they're a little more gentle. But I'm going to go in here off camera, but just to show you the technique, I'm just going to be going into those grooves. Um, I'll get out my magnification, maybe my little jeweler's loop, something like that, so I can see a little better. If you need reading glasses, that might be enough, just so you can really watch what you're doing and just clean out those burrs, and then we'll come back around it, and uh, we'll show you what it looks like under the magnification afterwards. So I'm pretty happy with that, how it feels on my finger and just checking it underneath the loop. You can see here we got some dust, so actually probably would have been a good idea to put something down in there first to block it and then you can just pull it out to get all this stuff. You're going to need to rinse it anyways. Um, so yeah, what I'll do is I'm going to put this into the sink, rinse it out. I'll probably get a skewer down there just to open the trap door, just to really have everything flush out of the pen. And then uh, we'll put the magnification back on so you can have a look and we'll see how this feels. How did we do? I uh, cleaned this off in the sink there to get all the dust out. And then what I did off camera is I would just take the back of the pen, screw it on, and then just feel for any kind of nasty edges or grinding. Was it in forward or was it in reverse? And then I would take my loop, look at the threads, get the little piece of sandpaper and, and maybe just get in there and just get that one inside edge a little or around that particular one or whatever it is I had to do. You can feel with your fingers too if you got sharp edges, but it's much, much better now. And when I screw this on, I'm pretty like, whoops, dropped it there. I'm pretty happy with it. Like it's not perfect. It'd be better if it was, you know, a metal insert that was in there. You know, I feel the threads, but I don't feel anything grindy and sharp like we had before. Let me get the microscope attachment on there so you can see what it looks like now. Let me warn all the uh, purists out there. Yes, this was a new old stock and you might be shouting at your phone or TV or computer screen right now that I just ruined this pen. Look, um, I want to use this pen every day. I've been waiting to get one of these pens for years. I want to use this all the time. I want to put ink in it. I want to change the ink and I don't want this thing to self-destruct anytime soon. So I tweak the threads just a little bit. If you want to keep yours absolutely pristine, yeah, of course, don't do that. But let's show you what it looks like now. Here we go. But you can see those burrs between those valleys. They're gone now. Got rid of those and just rounded those edges over a little bit. You can see this is a brass part and it's coated. So some of the coatings coming off. Yep, that's the way it's going. This is no longer new old stock. And then uh, if I can get my finger in here anyways, that uh, I can't get my finger in there. But that very top edge where it's open there at the top, that was quite pokey. So I had to round that and did that on both sides. I'll give you one last look, but you sort of get the idea. It's tough to get the focus. There we go. Just getting rid of all the goo down there, the burrs that was in the middle, and just smoothing out the tops of those threads, just rounding them a little bit. What I am going to do is put just a teeny, teeny little dab of some silicone grease on there. Now that won't get rid of it, but that'll help just a little bit. And then I'm going to fill it up with some ink. And then I figured since I got it out, let's just, you know, buff this thing up really good. I think I got this from Lee Valley here locally in the lower mainland and just going to put a final little shine on the pen. But what I'll do is actually I'll just show you one little thing on here too and compare it against the modern one. If you haven't seen the other video, you can go through and I go through a detailed uh, review of this pen and a comparison. But you can see there's the modern one. Here's the new, the uh, vintage one, the older one. We have a full piece of metal here that's bent over and here we got a notch. Why would you do that? Because everything else is essentially the same. 
tell you what, that little bit of gold not being there saves a tiny, tiny little bit of money. But if you make, they make a lot of these over decades, that does add up just a little bit. So that's a tiny little cost savings measure. Another improvement on the modern ones, I talk about this all the time, don't run your threads all the way to the top. That's what they haven't done on the modern ones. They don't run the thread all the way to the top. They do it right there. That can also lead to uh, things being more prone to cross threading and also just kind of ripping threads out of it too. I saw this difference here in the nib units, the whole unit here. So this is the, the older version. It's got a little square tab. This has a tab too, but it's rounded. The reason you do that is well, just when you go to put it in, it's just a little bit better. So if you're off the corner, it just slides in a little better. It's not a sharp corner, it's a round one. So these are just the microscopic revisions they've done over time. Actually kind of curious, let's put the older nib unit into a modern vanishing point and then a new nib unit into an older vanishing point. Uh, let me click that. Uh, let's see if these work here. All right, let's give that a click and see. Yeah, that seems to work absolutely no problem. What do we got over here? Backwards compatibility. There we go, fits through the trap door. So that's kind of cool. You can, uh, I guess you can swap nib units between the old and the new. Okay, let's use the new ink here. We're just gonna press it a couple times and then let it fill. I'll wait till I don't hear any more air bubbles. And you can see the sack there. If you can, I'll maybe try to zoom in. Needs to inflate. So there we go. This should be full of ink now. Let's wipe it up, put it together. That just feels infinitely better now. What I did do, again, when I was putting it back on, there was a little burr. I looked further back on this very first thread. It had a pretty steep edge, so I just got that sandpaper in there. You know, you just get it folded over, get a very slight, slight edge, and just trace it back and forth. Just very gentle. You're not going full beans on this. And that's with 400 grit. And uh, yeah, there was a little bit of scraping before, but now that's out of there and it's nice and smooth. Okay, that looks all nice and shiny now. Still got some fingerprints on there, of course, but that's looking good. Actually, it even feels a little bit nicer in the hand. Let's see how the ink looks now. I stopped in at the Muji store here and uh, picked up some new paper. I'll, I'll do a separate uh, little chat review on this, but look at this tiny little grid they got going on. This stuff is great, especially suits this pen, fine point. And for all you kind of small printers out there, this is great. I'll be talking about this in another video. So I like that ink a lot better, darker, more saturated, and as a bonus has some sheen. And to top it off, I'm not scared now to open this up and take the pen apart for cleaning uh, or you know changing out the ink or whatever it is that you wanna do. One thing I will caution you on as well, obviously don't do this if you're not comfortable, if you don't think you should. This, I wasn't nervous doing this at all. This I've done stuff like this a billion times on really, really expensive gear, especially in the field if you need to sometimes. Um, but watch out with these because the threads do run all the way to the top. They could be a little bit prone to cross threading. So you can always turn it back and then go forward. Uh, that usually helps out a little bit too because it's a two start thread or just really make sure you're on there straight and then away you go because you could start crooked and uh, this will just get blown out. Maybe in the distant future, I'll have to get a plug put in there. But just from the feel so far, I think uh, I, I might have saved the pen from having to do that or at least extended the life greatly, possibly beyond my own. So for all the gear that you saw me use, just down in the description, I'll leave some links. And also too, I always have like, there's discount codes and ways you can save money on pens. So be sure to always check my videos for that. And questions, comments, hit subscribe. Catch you next time.